All right, it's a very special day here today. It's a Messerschmitt day, doesn't happen very often. As a lot of people know, Messerschmitts are iconic microcars. There's nothing else quite like them. And Messerschmitt in German means sharp knife. So this is a 1955 Messerschmitt KR200 Cabriolet. And I want to point out some of the special features and details of this car. I'm showcasing it today, video showcase, showcasing it. As you probably have noticed, it has the towel rack bumpers, front and rear. This is an early car. 1955 is about the time that Messerschmitt KR200s were introduced. So this one has the serial number 55539. I don't know where that rates on how early it is, but it's pretty early. And as you can see, this car has the deluxe trim option with the red over black. It has the two-tone red top part of the body and then black along in here. Uh, it also has some special fancy, probably aftermarket hubcaps with these cool little spinners right here. The tires are 480 by eights. They're trailer tires uh, and fairly new. I'm gonna move up the car here. If you look at the turn signals right here, I believe these were probably installed at the time to replace these lights, which are the true European lights uh, that have been blacked out. I have a feeling that the Department of Transportation required these lights they were put on. I don't know. Every Messerschmitt's different. This car originally was imported into New Jersey, or that's where it was originally sold, and uh, who knows what the rules were back then. I'm going to get a close-up of the mirrors here. I believe these are the factory original mirrors. I've not seen some like this. I've started to polish the outside to show you that it can be polished up. It's got quite a bit of just corrosion and crud. This car has been sitting since 1984 or thereabouts. I just did a quick polish job on it today to show you that the paint does shine. Whoever owned it or whoever the prior owners were waxed the, waxed the bejeebas out of it. If you look at all the little cracks around the piping, you can see the white residue, which is uh, probably turtle wax, which was very popular in the 70s and probably 80s. The waxes we have today don't leave such residue, which is kind of good. It really protected the car. So I'm going to go about the car here a little more and point out some details. If you look close at the paint right here, you can see the reflection. A little bit of bubbling. This is the original paint. It's the original patina. As well as all the trim on the car, all this aluminum trim that divides the colors and down here for the bumper guards, all is a little pitted needs to be polished. That goes for the trim along the whole body line of the car and the three piece here and the back has a little a special section as well. Now these towel rack bumpers, I'm no expert, but they're not chromed, they're just painted silver and kind of crudely fashioned onto the car. I'm assuming that's original. Uh, this is the first set that I've seen. They attach securely underneath the car there and there. And some people really love them. Some people hate them. I think they're pretty cool. They uh, really add a lot of character to the car. One thing I've noticed about this car that I've never seen on another Messerschmitt is you have kind of the, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's the beak nose or the smiley face. Some people call it, you know, the character of the car. This one has these little aluminum strips that run upwards on both sides. That's new to me. On other cars I've seen, this is pretty common, as well as the, the Messerschmitt uh, emblem or the FMR emblem. So I'm going to move about the car a little more. If you see here in the corner, there's an old Messerschmitt Owners Club sticker. It's kind of interesting. I'm going to move up here to the windshield seal. You can see it's shrunken over the years, and there's a little bit of uh, delamination of the windshield itself. I mentioned earlier, this is a cabriolet. Originally, this car had a bubble top, and as they broke and they were scarce, people fitted uh, vinyl snap tops 
like this one. This one's actually in pretty good shape. The rear window is still uh, opaque. You can see through it, it's starting to kind of get a little yellow. And it has a zipper on the inside, which I'm not sure what it does, because it doesn't look like this. Oh, yeah, it does. It actually, you can unzip the rear window if you'd like. The gas cap here, if you look, it's got the old mobile mix insignia on that. That'll totally polish up. There are little hooks here for tying your suitcase on to the luggage rack. And if you look right here, the fuel valve has been changed on this car. If you turn this, that is the fuel valve. Reserve on, off. Let's move about to the back of the car. Again, we have our towel rack bumpers, which uh, kind of give it a, a funny look, but this one appears to have been chrome at one time and somebody's painted over the chrome silver. However, the luggage rack for your suitcase is silver. There's an additional light here. I'm not sure exactly what this does. That's probably the brake light and these are the running lights. There is a license plate bracket and I do not know if that license plate light is original. Again, the tires have been replaced. They're 480 by eights. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up the car. We'll take a look inside. This appears to be the original door handle. It's a little pitted. And voila, we are inside. So let's take a look at the dash. That's what most people look at. Again, we've got a lot of origin, original features here. This is the original headlight switch, original choke. We have the original wind-up clock. And then a space for a speaker, but no speaker. And then we have the speedometer, which reads in miles per hour, by the way. And it is showing 30,449 miles. And then just two lights probably one for the generator and one for reverse. I'm assuming the red is for the generator and the green is for reverse. The key does have the two position plane. And I'm gonna move down here. I'm gonna grab a, a flashlight so we can read the... There we go, the placard. Let's see if we can see that. KR200, 1955 has the weight 420 kg and the serial number which I don't know if you can read that 55539 looking about the under compartment here where the pedal box is I don't see any rust at some point in time this underside here somebody brush painted the same color as the car it does have an ashtray if you happen to smoke in really good shape. The uh, driver's seat here <clears throat> has a spring on it and the vinyl is in pretty good shape. It appears to be original. I don't know that though. On the map pocket here there's a little hole and we'll move back to the kids seats back here or the passenger seats. This is the little suitcase seat, jump seat and then the other seat here. There is a floor mat, and I've cleaned it up a little bit, but it's still a little dirty. And the valve for the fuel is not present. It was out the side, as I showed before. The tube for the heater is here. Normally, the tube would run underneath there and heat the passengers. The back here has just a simple bungee cord. This is the luggage compartment. And the luggage compartment is closed off when the, the top is shut. You can see the fabric of the top is in pretty good shape. I'm betting that this piece right here, this red piece, is probably remnants of the original dome. See we have a wiper motor. And if you look up here, we have the handle and upholstery for exiting the cabin. Now let's move to the engine compartment. I'm gonna grab a flashlight again. That's heavy. And the reason it's heavy is we have a spare tire. 
This is the original size. It is a 4.00 by 8 and it is not holding air. I have a feeling it's probably original. Judging by the tread, those big old blocks, it probably is. We have a gas tank, which looks to be in good shape, although I would probably clean it out. And looking about the engine compartment here, the engine is completely intact. Sorry, I pressed the button off there. And the black box is sitting over there. It has SEBA electronics. Everything appears to be here although the engine has not been started since 1984. If you look at that spark plug wire, it's not looking so good. As well as I do have the mud guard sitting over there. The Camden shaft boot is not looking so good, as well as the rear suspension bushings and the rear brake cable is not so good. So what I'd like to do now is put it up on the lift and we'll take a look at the underside. Okay, we are now standing underneath the Messerschmitt. You can see the original horn, and you can see how the towel rack bumpers attach with this wedge, which appears to be wooden. We're gonna look at the inside of the wheels here. The brake cables for the front appear to be intact. The boots for the steering appear to be intact. The front suspension bushings, ah, uh, they look a little soft. Look over here. Same. Now, there's a little bit of rot on the car, right there. That is the only spot, well, right along this seam is a little soft, and I'm gonna pan the pan, the belly pan, and there's a little spot back here, a little rusty. But overall, looking at the whole thing, those two spots are the only rough spots. Shine the light up in here. The heater is tubing and the exchanger looks like it's missing. It's pretty common. And again, the boot for the Camden shaft has got a tear in it. And the suspension bushings don't look so good. Overall, this car is pretty cool. It has its original patina. And I love looking at it. Messerschmitts are just so cool. So, all right, now we're gonna bring her down. Let's see if I can do this and walk around. Set my flashlight down. While the car is coming down, I will uh, show you some of the parts that come with it. Here's the rear mud guard here. It does have a, a bit of a crack right there. It needs to be welded up. These are the two remaining windows that are broken and can be used as templates. Car comes with a new gasket set for the engine and hubcaps, which I've never seen those type of hubcaps before. There is your SEBA electronics box and there's two pieces of fender trim that are missing uh, on the car and they're right here. They need to be attached to the front fender. Okay, so the car is down. I did forget to mention that it has the engine compartment latches right there. I'm gonna set the engine cover down so we can take another look at it. And I will also shut the lifting section so we can take a look at it. The little spring for the latch has got an issue right there. Overall, this is a great example of a 1955 Messerschmitt KR200. Thanks for taking a look. I hope I showed everything in as much detail as everyone wants.